Dad, we're doing fractions and decimals and percentages. I don't get them. Aren't you? Uh, didn't we get all oh, caught up? Yeah, we were caught up, and now we're doing fractions and percentages and demisols. Decimals. Of the Incredibles, the supercar once driven by superhero Mr. Incredible. It's the kind of thing you buy when you have everything else. They said it was beyond repair. But hey, it was in perfect condition. You used to drive that? They said it was destroyed. Long thought lost or destroyed, the famous car turned up at private auction. They said it was... That's my car! Feature. This car is just loaded with amazing gadgets. Care to demonstrate? I'd love to, but we haven't figured out how to make them work yet. <laughs> ah! Ah! Wow! I'm not sure what's happening works. here, Mark. Ah! Huh? Ah! What are you doing? This is not a toy. That's a rocket launcher. No, wait! Which one launches the rocket? Hey! This is not your car. It's not your car either. It is so. It's the Incredibile. Well, why is that guy have it? Well, he should not Launch the rockets! Launch the rockets! I'm not launching anything. Do you think I want an angry rich guy coming after me right now when I'm trying not to distract you? Everyone here has scattered, and I'm afraid I'll need to move at any minute. Oh, rich guy got my car. So you're not going to steal your car back from the rich guy? Has powers? Well, yeah, but you um, knew about this. Yeah. Why didn't you tell us? I don't We're know. your kids. We need to know these Did things. You tell mom. No. Why not? Your mother is you not want us to what tell we're you? talking you about. Why would you not tell mom? Because I didn't want to. What? Because it's Come not on, the time. Man. Why? Because. So uncool. Because I'm formulating. Okay. I'm taking in information, I'm processing. I'm doing the math, I'm fixing the boyfriend and keeping the baby from turning into a flaming monster. How do I do it? By rolling with the punches, baby. I eat thunder and crap lightning, okay? Cause I'm Mr. Incredible. Not Mr. So-So or Mr. Mediocre Guy. Mr. Incredible. We should call Lucius. No, I can handle it. There's no way oh. I'm gonna... Ah! I'm calling Lucius. <laughs> Looks normal to me. When did this start happening? Since Helen got the job. I assume she knows. Are you kidding? I can't tell her about this. Not while she's doing hero work. Mama. Girl, come on. Leave the saving of the world to the men? I don't think so. I've got to succeed so she can succeed. So we can succeed. I get it, Bob. I get it. When was the last time you slept? Who keeps track of that? Besides, he's a baby. I can handle it. I got this handle. So... You good then? You got everything under control, right? <laughs> what the? <laughs> cookie, cha cha want a cookie? <laughs> num num cookie, <laughs> cha cha want num 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 cookie, cookie, you know? cookie. Oh my god! Cookie. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. So he can still hear you from, from the other dimension. Yeah. That is freaky. And that's not like Not like our other kids. No, it is not. Full powers, totally random. So now he, what, is he good? Yeah, well, you think so, right? Obviously, I can't keep giving him cookies. Uh-uh. But if I stop... Oh! He's freaking down oh, here! Freaking. No bite in the dead. What No the bite! No, no, no. No, no. Okay. I think I just need a little bit of me time. Then I'll be good to go. Oh, you need more than me time, Bob. You need major life realignment on a number of levels, starting with baby super freak here. You need some solid outside the box thinking.
Galbaki? Elastigirl's super suit is by Galbaki? Explain yourself! God, you're worse than I thought. It's the baby. I brought the baby. Hmm, highly unusual. You look ghastly, Robert. I haven't been sleeping. I broke my daughter. They keep changing math. We needed double-A batteries, but I got triple-A's, and now we still need double-A batteries. Put one red thing in a load of whites, and now everything's pink. And I think we need eggs. Done properly, parenting is a heroic act. Done properly. I am fortunate that it has never afflicted me. But you do not come to me for eggs and batteries, Robert. I design hero wear. And Elastigirl must have a new suit. <sighs> Actually, it's Jack-Jack. You also wish a new suit for the baby? I would hardly classify this as an emergency. Well, he's a special case. We're studying. If I could just leave him with you for a leave while. Leave him here? <laughs> I am not a baby person, Robert. I have no baby facilities. I am an artist. I do not involve myself in the prosaic day to day. To day? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you seeing this, Robert? <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Of course you can leave the baby overnight. I'm sure filling in for Helen is challenging and you are very tired and the other children need you and miss you and you must go to them. Auntie Edna will take care of everything, so drive safely and goodbye. I enjoy our visits. Auntie Edna? In the world of The Incredibles, we have this rule, and that is that you never do something fantastic very long without doing something mundane. they do live a normal life. So in the house, the mundane part of it is Bob being at home with the kids and do things like feed them breakfast and put them to bed and do homework, but he's doing so in this evil villain lair type mansion. The house is this new life that they're being promised that's initially kind of dazzling, but also causes a lot of problems. And I thought, that's a really great thing that they're uncomfortable in this place. There's things like this big rock intruding into the room. There's water going through the house. Furniture that you can manipulate with a remote control. When Dash gets a hold of the controls and the floor just keeps opening and closing in different places to create these indoor pools, it's a nightmare if, if it was in real life and you had kids. For story, that's perfect. No! For those who don't remember, Honey is Frozone's wife. And she's never seen in the first film, but she has definitely heard. We are talking about the greater good! Greater good? I am your wife. I'm the greatest good you are ever going to get. We thought that it might be fun if we introduced a person that you learn over the course of the scene is Honey. You see someone reacting to something outside, and the first thing that she does is she presses a remote, and the wall turns around, and everyone will go, oh, this is Frozone's apartment. That must be Honey. But we felt like we, A, stayed away from the big action scene too long, and that we were killing the momentum that we were gaining by having this big action scene. And B, we also ultimately decided the off cameraness of it is part of the joke. And then Honey can be kind of anyone you imagine her to be. <gasps> Honey? What? Where's my super suit? I had to. Uh Be trying to hide it on me! It, it was filthy! It was next to Godly 
Everything is clean and ready for action. I'm not playing with you. It was filthy. Ah, how dare you? How dare you? Ah, your ah. wife. Lucius, don't you think you can get away from me? Lucius! Yeah! Ah. This sequence deals with an unexpected development at E's house. An earlier version of the plot of this film had dealt with artificial intelligence, and it seemed like it would be good, since E has automated so much of her house, to have the artificial intelligence of her defense systems be corrupted. It just seemed like it would be interesting to have somebody's highly technological house turned against them. I liked Bob having to elude E's defenses that was kind of the original idea. I'm happy that we went the direction we did with E and instead of this, even though this has some cool stuff in it. Recognize the car? Robert, I've lost control of my security system. Finding an opening to any movie is always a challenge because you're kind of setting the table for the movie and story to come. We had to remind the audience that Syndrome's jet from the first film destroyed their house. This was interesting because it said what happened directly after that moment. And I imagine that they would have to strategize on uh, what they're going to do. They don't have a house anymore. They don't have a phone. This isn't a universe where cell phones exist. And they would have to somehow get to a phone and call Dicker to come pick them up again. And I think it's funny. It's kind of scruffy and flabby because it's a, a version that we didn't stay with very long. It is kind of fun and it is interesting in showing how we explore these ideas. <laughs> I hate to cut short a tender moment, but unless you want to explain this to a crowd... Oh, come on. This is your plan? To hide in the bushes of the Spraddling's backyard? I suppose you think the Cullies have better bushes. And no, this is not my plan. We need to get to a phone, right? To call Dicker? Right. Well, the nearest pay phone We're not is... We're hunt for a pay phone, are we? Well, what do you think we should do? Knock on the neighbor's door wearing our super suits and ask... When they notice I'm gone, phone? just say I went to call Dicker, okay? Mm, okay. Uh, That's not gonna... This was an earlier scene, and the idea of it was that it would be interesting to see Edna's usual job. E's first love is to do fashions for superheroes, super wear, and it itches both her design side and her tech side. But the supers are illegal in the world of The Incredibles, and she doesn't get to work with superheroes very much. Most of her work consists of regular fashion for regular models, and this is how she goes about it. Explain your sudden interest in fashion and babysitting, Robert. I'm sorry to do this to you, I know you're busy, but I didn't know where else to go. Helen's out of town. Domestic problems, Robert? Yeah, of a superhero nature. Ah, you have my attention now. I hate this. Destroy it. Jack-Jack has powers. Yes. Not just one, many, and they're all over the place. He's bursting into flames, he's shooting lasers out of his eyes, he's floating between dimensions. Fascinating. He is a polymorph. Handle it. I endorse your decision. E, I'm operating on no sleep. I'm telling you, this baby is freaking me out. Yes. 
I don't know where he's going to be. I don't know what he's going to be. Robert. Anything can happen. And I've got to respond. Robert! What? What? The baby is gone. What is it, Humphrey? They're going crazy. They want you to take a bow. And they want the glitter baby. No glitter baby. First the team will bow, then the junior designers, then I will come. No glitter baby. You see what I'm dealing with? Is he going to be liquid or fire lasers or turn into a beach ball? I don't know. And if I don't know what he's going to be, how am I going to contain him? you got to help me. You need to simultaneously protect the baby and the surroundings and track the baby's movements should he disappear from view. You are lucky, Robert. I am intrigued. I just love cute, round things. I really wanted to create a dumpling-feeling world that was cute and round and appealing. The early sketches I did of Mom, she had those proportions like a big head and a small squat body. Once we figured out Mom's design, that's how we built the world around her. We made the tables and chairs and everything extra chunky, simplified all of the details of the world. If you look carefully, a phone in her dining room has like four buttons. <laughs> the fruit stalls and each box, there's only like four pieces of fruit per box. We really wanted to capture that warmth and simplicity and realism of a Chinese household. All the things that we saw in our own homes. A rice cooker in the background, a lucky cat, the grocery calendar. We had to find that sweet spot between realism and a stylized look to fit with the stylized characters. Several times there are three or four characters on screen and Jack-Jack is one of them. And your eye is meant to be looking at the person talking or something like that. But now if you've seen it more than once, if you've seen it once, you can now focus on what Jack-Jack is doing. And you will be rewarded by watching what Jack-Jack is doing in a lot of these scenes. Even if it's subtle, it's usually very unique to him, and sometimes it's really funny. But he doesn't upstage the other characters. He's not trying to draw your eye. But he is doing stuff that is very interesting and funny and of his character. Um, the movie is loaded with stuff like that. And... Uh, um, so um, I would just say that uh, the movie does reward multiple viewings. So uh, there, uh, Jack Jack is left overnight with uh, Edna and we see leading up to that and we see the after of that, but we don't see the night itself. So that uh, Ted Mathot, our head of story, came to me in like February, I think it is, and said, I think we should do what we did with Jack-Jack Attack with this movie. And it was kind of like, it's a no brainer. And what's funny is, is that on the internet, everybody's saying, you should do what happens with Jack-Jack and Edna. And they're gonna think that they came up with the idea. It's like, we were practically done with the short when people first started suggesting that, but everyone is suggesting it. So. I guess it's good timing. The power to green light all of my projects instantly. I just, no, no uh, reticence from any studios. I just go like this, I say the idea, and they say, here's the money. You may not want to answer this word, but um, can you tease an Easter egg that can only be discovered no, in the blue No, 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 and no. 
everybody does this for 20 years. People have been doing this with me. It's like, tell us where the secret thing is hidden. It's like, you guys would be horrible on Easter because I would just be going out saying there's an egg hidden there and there's an egg there. And no, the part of the fun of Easter eggs is not saying where they are. It's just, you just have to run into them. The movie is full of them. It has them all over the place, like all the other movies. And I will not say where they are because it's not fun if I tell you where they are. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Brad Bird, director of Incredible Family. I'm not only back writing and directing this second installment with the Parr family, I'm also back doing the English voice of Edna Mode again. I hope you enjoy Incredible Family when you watch the movie on DVD or Blu-ray and on demand. Mitene, arigato.